Very hey, good. Guys, uh, how are you doing? Uh, it's uh, Kevin, Connor, Fresh Express team. So we uh, just got back from, uh, not just, but uh, before the weekend, uh, we got back uh, last week. So uh, yeah, we thought we would uh, do this live, uh, last live video to just kind of do a uh, summary of the trip uh, and how it wrapped up and ended and uh, just share some of the uh, thoughts, uh, a few stories from it. And then I know as well, uh, yeah, we're open to questions uh, uh, just about the trip, what we did, the route, every fresh, uh, open to uh, anything you guys want to ask us. There. So. I don't know, Connor. What are some of the high level stuff of the uh, trip uh, you can share? Well, it was a good time. <laughs> <laughs> no, main thing, uh, I guess, uh, nice early start on uh, Friday morning there. Uh, got a loading went uh, really well. No hiccups whatsoever. That was really nice. Um, and then, uh, border paperwork. Uh, I've seen the drivers do a lot. I've done the Office work from my side plenty of times, but it was nice to see it from the driver's side. Again, um, I've seen it, so it wasn't too hard to do, but it's nice to get the experience. Uh, so that went very well. Connor was mostly the paperwork guy. I, I gotta admit, I probably, I probably uh, abused uh, your yes. assistance there a little bit. Next to nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, and I think those were my first troubles I actually started at the uh, at loading. That's where we on the uh, keep trucking app in the box. Um, I guess at some point in August, I was testing the app, and I guess I went on duty in August and found out at that point that I was uh, working 24 hours a day since August. So uh, <laughs> that was, uh, yeah, that was, a, I think, about half, at least halfway to the border, I worked and communicated with Keep Trucking to uh, get that sorted out. So I was glad that uh, Connor's uh, app was working and uh, you could start driving there. Yeah, that was cool. Yes, it took a while to deal with that, but uh, fortunately the border, I can't believe how quick it was, but uh, just a little cover sheet we fill out, there's a little stick of a barcode, we hand it to the, the border um, patrol, and I uh, scanned it, asked us a couple questions, two minutes for past the border, and uh, in the States there, so that went super well. Yeah, we were actually commenting, it was fun, kind of funny because like just going in a personal vehicle up to the border, we were both kind of just looking at each other because it was like, in the car or on the motorcycles or whatever, we find it's like, I don't know, we just just half a dozen questions or whatever, and we handed the border paperwork and we were just like, ooh, like, right? No, that, it was cool, it's cool. Was there much difference between going into the US and coming back to Canada in terms of border crossing? No, it was very similar. Again, just a cover sheet, the stick or a barcode, he scans it, a couple more questions, uh, just coming back from stateside to put money in what we purchased. But uh, again, yeah, within five minutes we're past, it was uh, very easy. Yeah. Going north, that was actually where uh, I think the biggest difference was, I think that was at the point that you were uh, sleep deprived. <laughs> and, uh, and I know we were coming close to the border and uh, I was hollering at Connor in the bunk to get up in uh, the passenger seat with uh, with me there, get the paperwork. And uh, I would say that would be the first time all trip that uh, I think the uh, the fist just about came out, <laughs> but uh, it was good. I mean, coming up, we pushed hard. You know, we ran true team, and uh, so uh, yeah, as we were kind of getting to the end of it, there it was uh, it was a tough push to bring it in. So we were kind of we were tired at that point. For sure. So could you uh, walk us through the the trip? So you mentioned Connor. You left Friday morning, uh, very early. What was the general route that you took from, from Winnipeg to California and, and back? And a, a quick summary, if you can recall. You probably know the interstate numbers a bit better, but straight down from Winnipeg along the interstate, uh, fueled up in Fargo. And so that was nice. Um, that was a very busy uh, pilot, actually, um, but easy to get to. Actually, that's where we took, uh, went to the Loves instead and had to turn around, cross the street, go back to pilot and uh, fueled up, and from there, uh, we went west uh, towards Montana. It's all that drive, and that was, um, I was starting to get more in the evening, and it was pretty flat, not too, too much to see yet. Yeah, that's a big old open rolling country going across, uh, yeah, Dakota, you come into Montana, and then really it was, uh, we dropped down, I think it was the 190, what, 191, yeah. on the uh, west side of Yellowstone, and so at that point, you know, that's almost like, 
yeah, you could easily, you're in the truck and driving with a load, but you could easily like substitute that and it's just like you're on vacation, whether it be, I would say motorcycle, that's my preference if I'm not in the truck or some people in RV, but at that point we had the rolling streams oh, and right alongside of the truck, because okay? we stopped to fuel, oh, we, show, we showered right before we went south there. It was our first shower of the trip. Yeah, well, it's a blur. You know, we were going in the days and that, but I remember we, we showered first. I remember actually grabbing a quick little oh, video yeah. clip, yeah. and you were walking back across the uh, yard, um, and it was at that point you were driving. Yeah. And actually, yeah, there I was trying to film in the park, and uh, but it was tough. There was just some beautiful scenery, and I'm just like, oh my, right beside the truck, I looked down, and in the stream, I could clearly see like the bottom of the, the river that was running. And uh, I remember trying to grab video, but there was just no way. I was getting no bars, no reception. So, nice, yeah. nice little passenger perspective. Yes. Yeah. As a driver, that was the, the first experience I've had. I drove through mountains, real mountains, in a truck. So I was definitely uh, paying attention to the road. <laughs> There's some um, tire turns there, beautiful scenery again, huge mountain on the left side, huge mountain, huge mountain on the right side, a uh, nice river running through the middle. But uh, not that I saw too much, it was getting pretty late at that point. I was going through the gears quite a bit. I think um, I almost had about 20 cars behind me. <laughs> and uh, the real lineup was starting to uh, pile up there. Not that I was worried too much. I was just uh, more concerned with driving. But this is uh, just a beautiful stretch. It would have been lovely to do it on a motorcycle uh, in daylight. But it uh, made it interesting to do it in the truck there. I think it had about three quarters daylight. Yeah, that was stretch. It was. The sun was setting. Yeah. Yeah. And then it was at that very end where it, like, it got dark. And then that's where there were some big grades and poles at the end. And that's where it was like, yeah, you were working the Jake and grabbing gears. And, uh, and then we came down and exited there. And then, so what's it? Uh, uh, Salt? No, Salt Lake is farther south. Uh, I'm trying to think. At that point, we, we turned off and headed toward uh, Twin Falls, Idaho. That's when we met up with uh, Marcus and Erica that night. Yeah. You know. So, anyways, like, and again, you know, at this point we're driving at night, you know, uh, the grades are up and down, but nothing too, too bad. Like, that road was pretty, there was a couple, like, uh, just a real couple crazy ones. Uh, but besides that, it was a bit more mediocre. Yeah. And then, like I said, it was Twin Falls when we met Marcus. Okay. We yeah. dropped down. And yeah, so that was, that was nice. That was actually the first opportunity we had to uh, connect with uh, some of the uh, fellow, uh, AgriFresh team out there, and so it was uh, kind of nice. We were texting with some of them, but uh, Marcus and Erica reached out, and uh, so it was cool. Just they were coming up uh, north with load produce. We were heading south, and uh, we got into the truck stop there. And uh, but oh my god, that it was. Uh, there's one thing we found on the trip too is like just the truck stops uh, at night. Oh, like just packed. Parking is not fun. Yeah, and uh, and that was kind of. We looped around a few times there, and that was actually where I did a quick video. There was a, I did a blindside uh, back in there that was, uh, was just super tight, and kind of when we looked after it, saw it was reserved parking, and just we probably shouldn't have been there. We did get in there, it worked for the night, but uh, yeah. And then that one actually went right in the middle, back and then uh, uh, Marcus and Erica walked up. Marcus helped with you, kind of guided me in there, and uh, yeah, it was good. We were sitting in the uh, Talked outside for a bit and then went hop in the truck and just uh, sitting uh, around there with Marcus and Erica kicking around stories in their truck. And um, yeah, from there it was uh, up the next morning. We were up and down early and I wanted to get out there and thought there'd be a breakfast at the truck stop, but there wasn't. That was kind of weird. Yeah. You know, I thought there'd be a restaurant. But uh, I know from that point, so it was I think the 93 dropped down into Nevada to Wells. Um, we get there. Uh, you kept uh, thinking you're going to see aliens here. I remember. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if, you, if you know Area 51 and the surrounding area, what it looks like, that is alien territory. <laughs> it was all straight roads, bushes, just I don't know. I swear you could have saw a cactus in the distance. Just these like dry desert mountains in the background. You see these roads that go off, and Connor was always like, "Where do you think that road goes?" That's, that, that's where the aliens are back there. Or there's like a secret uh, thing, and I'm like, hey, yeah, I bet you behind that mountain range, that's where it is. And, and so, uh, yeah, we're laughing there. And then there was like two, and you come across, I remember I'd see cows, you know, and they're just like, they look like they're in the middle of like 
nowhere. And I'm thinking, whose cows are these? <laughs> like, you know, who's like, you know, it's just like, so from aliens to cows, like, that was, uh, that was a cool stretch. Yeah. Yeah. You were driving through there. Yeah. Well, even as we got closer to uh, Reno there, uh, towards the end of Nevada. Yeah. That's right, actually. It's some pretty decent mountains on the interstate. I was going through, uh, through a few years, again, using the Jake. And um, that, that caught me off, uh, off a bit. I didn't expect that. But it made for a good desert run. Yeah. I know prior to that, that was actually so Connor drove that stretch through the uh, alien and cow fields there, uh, mm -hmm. down to Wells. And then uh, we finally found breakfast in Wells, right? Remember we went inside the restaurant there? Mm -hmm. You had that salad thing? Oh, okay, yeah. I remember yeah, that. yeah. yeah. And there was a little casino. Yeah. It's pretty much all the signs were either, uh, what was it, uh, casino, liquor, <laughs> smoked. <laughs> Those are the signs we kept seeing on the road. But uh, I know that day I really enjoyed the, uh, I took over from there, drove across the desert. And I remember it just being such a, uh, I don't know, it was just a really cool uh, day stretch for me to drive. Just big open uh, west desert, I like that. And uh, just sit, sitting on the cruise, and uh, I, mean, I was just just enjoying every hour of that, you know. And, and then that's where Connor kind of took over before we know. That's when we grabbed fuel and Fernley. Yep. Yeah. And that's when we, I guess we got the truck and trailer watch there as well. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I was all happy about that. The trailer was filthy. Those blue beacon guys are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy, but awesome. They're so thorough. They, there was one guy. Um, I was just searching for Paul. He had a flashlight on every piece of the truck. It's going around the whole thing, and uh, they impressed me. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I guess, like you know, I've, I've seen that lots of times, but it was funny to watch Connor uh, take that in because I'm, yeah, I just I knew what to expect. And but yeah, it's always the guy with the flashlight, and there's like a half dozen guys, and they're just spraying and going. It's just like a SWAT team. Yeah, uh, attacks the truck to clean it. Oh, then we left the sun visor open there for a bit. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We got a little bit of rain shower coming in. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, then that's when uh, you took over from there, and so Reno had kind of that casino Las Vegas feel for a bit before Donner's passed. Oh yeah, all oh, big interstate lights everywhere. Yeah. Pretty big city. Reno Sparks, same thing, but different somehow. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that leads right into Donner's pass there, and then Donner's that was um, not as crazy as I expected. It was just um, the main thing about Donner's pass. I think it was just the time it took to get through there. Constantly you're going through the gears, up, down, grades, and um, I don't know, it must have been like an hour, hour and a half drive for Donners. It was, uh, it was pretty good. And some of the, because this is at night time now, and again, that was just um, what, some of my first mountain experience that day. So, <laughs> Donners was fun. And then there was, I think the worst, I think there might have been a 7% uh, downgrade at about the worst. So that, um, again, all the trucks are passing me as usual. Um, I, I got to about 14 gear, Jake on at like 1700, 1800 RPM, slowing down the truck. You still got to press the brake. And uh, couldn't see any of the scenery at all. Nice and dark, and uh, the Donuts was uh, real interesting there. I remember that was like, uh, that was kind of one of our first, I think, as we were doing the video stuff. That was actually like a really embarrassing point, a little bit, where it was like, you know, I'm like, yeah, this is Fresh Express, we're going through Donner's Pass. And then we're just like, did we, did we really go through it yet? You know, and then we found out, we came up to a checkpoint, and then we found out it was farther up the road. Yeah. Yeah, and we're just like, oh my God, all the, you know, the driving team probably sees us like, oh yeah, nice job with all these guys. And, but finally, we did realize we were at Donners. We saw a sign that said Donners, yeah. the elevation at the peak. And uh, and I think, too, what, uh, what kind of surprised me was it actually seemed it was more intense controlling the truck going down. Oh yeah, like you know, you were downshifting, climbing, like on the front side, it didn't seem like too big a deal, but going down, like wow, there was just because what was that? Like forty miles of downhill. Yeah, yeah. And the road twisted, and there was construction and cement barricades, and then like I said, uh, you know, kudos to Connor, uh, give him credit. Like I was, I was really impressed how we how we handled the truck through there and stuff, and uh, and yeah, you get like guys just flying through there, and um, I don't know, it's just like. Uh, some of them are pretty crazy, so either they're they're uh, really seasoned and know that road like the back of their hands, or they're uh, just crazy. I don't know. I don't know. Crazy. Yeah. Like I was doing about seventy through donors for for majority of it, 
Other guys, they they're easily doing 100 gold time. And that was sketchy. Even 70 was a bit fast for a few quarters that probably took. You're talking yeah. kilometers. Yeah, kilometers yeah. down. Yeah. 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 So we'll get to the questions in a few moments, but one that's relevant right now is uh, we have a question here about uh, the type of transmission in the truck, because you're talking about all the shifting that you needed to do. Maybe you could speak briefly about that and then continue on with the, the journey to California. Like I guess like basically, so in that truck we had, that is actually one of the, the only truck in the fleet that has the 18 speed. And basically the, and then we have 13 speeds in all the other trucks. Um, really the only difference of the 18 speed is like, you know, you got two ranges on the transmission and the 18, you can split the bottom gears. And besides for like pulling out of a truck stop, climbing a, yeah. some steep grade right away, the, uh, the extra gears of the 18 are, they really don't do much uh, for you. But uh, so like, yeah, 13 speeds, 18 speeds we run, and they've got, uh, they've got a gear for every spot. Mm -hmm. You know, for the road that we run, they're, uh, they work good. Mm -hmm. they, they make it, uh, we have fun, you know, yeah. it's a, it's a, it almost kind of seems like competition if we shift the smoothest, if we keep the RPM the lowest, and, you know, so we were uh, taking shots back and forth, but it was a slicker shifter. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> nice. So, uh, so leaving that area, then your next uh, stop was, or was that at the, the shipper? You had some stops before the shipper? Sacramento. Yeah, Sacramento. That was like seven <laughs> late interstates. That's like Kevin was in the bunk. You weren't you were even seeing it. And that was me, new, newer truck driver. That was crazy. And just eyes in front of me, not looking anywhere. Just trying not to uh, turn lanes as uh, often as possible. And, uh, that was actually where we got our, my first uh, key trucking violation for, for the electronic loads. Yeah. Yeah. That's, um, I'm not sure how much we should describe electronic loads, but you have a 14 hour window to do all your work in. And so I actually passed that by about 10, 15 minutes. Where I realized that through going through Sacramento, my hours were short. Um, where for the past hour and a half, I was probably looking for a place to pull over, uh, was not finding anything. And so eventually, turning south uh, after Sacramento, uh, more towards South California, finally just decided to pull out on this uh, little little sketchy pull out. Wasn't much of anything, and I got changed over. Yeah, there was like, yeah, I remember I was kind of like already okay, like let's just pull over somewhere. And that, you know, and again, that's just like real world, uh, um, you know, kind of, I guess, like uh, real world, like the uh, pains that we realize that driver's going to deal with, you know, the electronic logs are rigid and, you know, right? And who thinks from Donners to Sacramento that there's going to be an issue finding a spot to uh, change drivers? But uh, traffic was intense. You know, there was no rest areas, no nothing. Yeah. And so, yeah, so finally we grabbed the shoulder to get uh, Connor off duty. And, uh, yeah, that's where I, I took over. And, and I think at that point we were running down the 99. And then we hit the uh, pilot flying jade in French camp. Was the name of it there? Yeah. Yeah. Then did we actually stop there? Uh, we continue on to. Well, we pulled into French camp because that was when we went uh, by uh, Papi Kenworth. And remember it was at Zulino. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, there was just, again, you know, like these truck stops at night are just jam packed. And uh, so I remember we grabbed the uh, stock up on some uh, muscle milks and water. And, and basically we got out of there. And uh, this was actually, it actually leads up to one of the, it was a special memory of the trip. Um, we got a text earlier from uh, Marcus and Erica. So guys, thank you so much for this because uh, was it Casa de Fruta? Yeah. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, close enough. But they're saying like outside of our delivery to Gilroy, there's this little spot. This is your driving in. And it's not going to feel like you're going into the right spot because it's. And I know what they mean because we start pulling in, add a touristy kind of feel to it and stuff. And but uh, anyways, this was what maybe a half hour, forty five minutes from our delivery. Uh, yeah, yeah. And as it got as close, the uh, spot, like I said, pulled in at night, there was trucks there, there was lots of room for parking, but uh, it was like a winery, you know, they had a 24 hour restaurant, which still, it just seems like odd, it would be right there, but it was awesome. Um, so we spent the night there, had an awesome breakfast in the morning, was it the California omelet? Yep. And avocado and sprouts, sprouts and uh, anyways. We, we do eat healthy, we, we haul fresh and healthy, we work out, but so um, we're pretty pumped to get uh, such a such healthy omelet there. So the meal was awesome and we walked around there a bit. And that's when they had the park, they had a bunch of old equipment, a bunch of farm yeah. equipment. Yeah. Yeah. 
Or an old rusty note uh, alongside the park there. So yeah. that was a nice spot. Yeah. And then uh, basically the next morning we went into our first delivery to uh, Terra International, uh, talking to Matt there. And again, that was the, you know, again, both the highlight of the trip. Um, Matt is a, like a, a smaller independent business guy and he's moving uh, uh, all kinds of peat moss. Uh, he's got a bunch of customers there, but he was just like, uh, just super positive, really pumped about the, the AgriFresh team. And, you know, so obviously for me as an owner, just to hear like a frontline customer, uh, just uh, telling you that uh, Kevin, your drivers are awesome. Look forward to you guys. Your, your team in the office is awesome. You guys communicate. And uh, I was taking some shots at some of the competition and stuff. But uh, anyways, he was just uh, really good. Uh, I loved uh, visiting and talking with him. And, uh, you know, uh, Matt, wish you all the success out there. And uh, I hope that AgriFresh, we can just uh, keep uh, pushing those votes in for you there. So that finished up there. I remember you kind of navigated all the parking lot. That's when we went over to, what is that truck stop there? We did wash all the stuff. Oh, uh, Salinas. What is it called something though? I think it's just a pilot with flying jig. Uh, there's a word, there's a different name for it. It's got kind of a weird name. Yorick, garlic farm. Oh, I had a watch show. Yeah, oh, okay, that was before the, the pilot. Yeah, yeah. That was kind of one of our first little bit lost for a bit with the turnaround. Oh, okay, yeah, that's right. We found out that it washed out and stuff. And then from there, it was down to the uh, pilot uh, in Salinas. That was Monday morning. Yeah, because then we were a little empty. Trailer washed out, went down there, and then that's where we kind of did a little video where we were doing some uh, mechanical maintenance in the yard, checking the truck over. Oh my God, this was a day too. It was like 25, sunny. We knew back home in Manitoba it was like minus 17 degrees Celsius, and we were just like grinning from ear to ear. It was, it was good. Um, we advice we always get to drivers before they go to low produce is kind of like, hey, you know, the produce is uh, it takes patience, you know. Uh, have a shower, or get yourself uh, fed, don't rush in there, you know, unprepared. Uh, so we just took our own advice, you know, went over the equipment, uh, got showered up, you know, uh, had some needed subway there, and then uh, then basically we went over for, uh, we had a little bit of time to kill yet, and then we went over for a 1700 check-in to uh, uh, the Regal. That was a big monstrosity of a place. Oh, yeah, that was crazy. Yeah. So, so yeah, so basically there we went through the check-in process. Again, just took in just how huge it was. There was like 50 doors or something there. Um, we had a very small uh, item to pick up there. It was like 66 cases that was cut to 48. We did the check-in thing, got the call in the middle of the night to, well, not middle of the night, but it was closer to like 2100 or so when we were called to load. That was a good three, four hour wait. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But I know we kind of crashed and dozed off and we got the call on the cell phone the back end. Um, Everything went pretty smooth once they called us in. Mm -hmm. uh, we couldn't get our second pickup uh, done at Semco that was just around the corner. Um, but again, it, it was like, I don't know, we're tired at that point. At the Regal, we just like uh, went in the bunk, went to sleep. Uh, first thing the next morning, went over to uh, Semco. And uh, those were really awesome bunch of guys there. Yeah, they were good. Yeah. Yeah. Food truck came in. <laughs> uh, I remember, you know, we, we love our coffee in the morning. Connor, just a day before, he had cash in his wallet, and he's just like, what do I need this for, you know? And so he spent it. We get there, we see a food truck thinking, oh yeah, we're gonna use a credit card for like $2 a coffee. <laughs> Thankfully, they took credit card. Mm -hmm. and so we did get our coffees, and but uh, at Sepco there, this is where on the produce side, we know how critical it is that the, uh, and, you know, that you get your counts right, the, the skids, it's produce, so the skids don't all weigh the same, you know, you can get one skid weighs a thousand, another weighs two thousand pounds. Uh, we got to do pulping and do temperature checks, and I know in the past, I have, like, experienced, like, you know, where they just don't want you in there, they don't want you checking the temperature of the produce, and make it, in the, you know, an uncomfortable experience where you got to serve yourself and get the job done, and uh, this was, this guy was just awesome. So just so you know, if you're doing this more, they're not all going to be that nice. But uh, this guy was really great. He, we asked him about pulping. He's no issues. These are all your skids. He says, feel free to take all your temperatures. Uh, when we talked to Poland, we were loading for Canada. We had to be mindful of the uh, uh, bridge length and uh, the trailer axles. You can get the 40 foot mark. He was all aware of it. He had a plan on how he wanted to load it, said he did a lot. And uh, so, anyways, um, yeah, they, we did some comparisons with their pulper. Um, Temperatures all looked good. The guy just loaded it all in there. Um, 
Yeah, we I, I, that couldn't have really gone better. We went over to uh, from there. We went to the pilot to to scale it, and uh, of course, it's bang on the money. Where we had like eleven five on the steers, you log twelve. I think we we're thirty three and change on the drives and the trailer. We we're what thirty. That's a bit one yeah. So uh, yeah, that uh, the, the shipper at Semco, good job, and you uh, you definitely loaded exactly perfectly. So uh, I think at that point, that was funny. That's where we were, you were backing in a tight spot after we scaled. We were, Connor was backing in a tight spot, and I was kind of trying to help guide him in there. And the truck stop, it's like it's crazy. Guys are trying to come in. Guys are trying to go, and Connor's trying to put it in a tight spot there. And it was so funny because there's a guy standing across and uh, he's got a drink and he's, he's watching us. And, uh, you know, when we finished, we realized it was one of our Equifresh guys who was there and that was going to do with the company. And so, uh, yeah, it was, give you a thumbs, thumbs up on uh, backing skills. It was a good back. Yeah. <laughs> and so we talked to Darren for a bit, but it was, it was too bad because uh, I know I felt a little bit bad where it was, um, you know, Darren was in the mood to visit, and he runs into like, hey, there's, there's Kevin, and there's Connor from the office, and and then the same hand we're trying to juggle that with like, okay, it's like Tuesday, we know that we have like a, an 0100 appointment on Thursday, so we got basically a day and a half to get to Regina. So already, you know, we're processing like, okay, it's like it's go time, you know. So we did try as best we could to manage, like, you know, keep talking with Darren a little bit and visiting, you know, and stuff and that, and then same hand, saying, Darren, sorry, we got to get it together, and went in, you started cranking out the paperwork for the border, yeah. and uh, and I started driving to uh, make miles, you yeah. know, so that's kind of like the, the, the delivery, the reload, and it's at this point that it's like a full, basically, team load, we started trucking north, like the coolest part about the northbound, I think that that was just kind of a, a fluke thing. Everywhere that we went through in the night coming down, like from Donners, we came through in the nighttime. Um, I'm trying to think on the kind of Idaho, the 191, uh, the last portion we came through at nighttime. Right, Idaho. Idaho. Yeah, but it kind of seems some of the stuff that we didn't see at uh, at night on the way down, we seem to be coming through in the day uh, daytime going back up. <laughs> um, so. I was excited. I got to drive Donners this time. You know, I'm driving this time through there. I didn't want to go out there and not say I didn't drive it, but uh, I enjoyed that. I mean, you know, we did some videos uh, there. I was kind of grinning from ear to ear. You know, just was, going on that, uh, there was a question: What is more uh, difficult, going uphill or downhill with the equipment? Probably downhill. That's where safety can really become a concern. Uphill, you can miss a gear. And you're just going to lose momentum, you're just going to slow right down. And uh, eventually, you can always stop, they'll get in gear and keep going. Downhill, if you ever lose your gear, it'll just run away on you. And you know, you're going to go crazy fast, you're going to hit a quarter and flip it. And that can easily cause a death. The downhill is definitely more, uh, more something to be cautious of. Yeah. I, I, would, I would agree completely with Connor on that. The going uphill, you know, like you said, if your shifting skill is poor, you're gonna blow gears. You're gonna lose all your momentum. It's not gonna be pretty. No. But um, you know, for things to turn into a dangerous situation on the uphill, you really have to do something stupid. <laughs> um, and yeah, on that downhill, like that is that there's a there's a, that's, that's a real reality check. Is that like that can turn into a dangerous situation? One of the takeaways from the trip is sometimes like even at Agri Pressure, I know that there's a certain amount of skill and experience that we uh, ask for for drivers. And you know, and it's kind of like, it's weird sometimes, you sometimes get that pressure a bit, there's something for your driver saying to give me a chance and stuff like that, you know, and, and it's like, it's not, um, it's not always about like trying to give someone a chance or be like, oh, hey, let's, let's give this guy a break or, you know, girl a break. And, and uh, it's, it's really, it's about, uh, it's about safety. And so sometimes when we don't uh, take someone onto the team uh, due to experience, it's about protecting that individual. It's about protecting the public out there. Because yeah, when you if you misjudge it, if you let that truck get away from you, if you get those brakes too hot, and you come in that corner too hot at the bottom, um, yeah, it's like I said, you know, when you got the skill set, it's fun, you know. Uh, but uh, that could turn into a bad situation fast. Yeah. So definitely down. Yeah. Yeah. Similarly, a lot there's a lot of very experienced professional drivers, but they don't have any. Uh, winter experience, right? They haven't driven in 
Canada or in Europe in the colder uh, countries. So they may have had a whole career as a, a truck driver, but they, they don't have that experience, right? But oh, yeah, very, very true. Like, I mean, like, you know, out of uh, Manitoba, we are, there's a whole bunch of companies that run like uh, straight south, and, you know, and go straight south on I-29 to Texas and back. Like, there's this big flat running. If you just run the Canadian prairies, it's just a lot of big flat running. So, yeah, you can wrap up experience. But uh, there's no question we run a uh, uh, incredibly uh, beautiful, uh, scenic, geographic, but uh, make no mistake, it's like uh, we're constantly, like, you know, again, especially when you're from kind of from Donners into California, even California, there's mountain ranges you go through and stuff. And, and um, we, we need a high, uh, you need a high skill set uh, on the driving side. And, you know, and then you throw on top of that, right? The, uh, the fact that once we load the produce, you've got a perishable commodity. Like it's just not, you know, we hit the go button on that reefer and that reefer is running. You're just like, uh, so it's not only do you, um, you got to navigate through those, uh, those mountains. Um, you know, you just know you got something in the back that's got a shelf life to it. And, mm -hmm. uh, it's got to get to where it's got to be. Mm -hmm. So, and actually, you, where you just left off, you were heading north, and you were, were driving, and Connor, you were doing the paperwork. So, what? Just to finish off the, the trip, where did you go in Canada, and, and when did you get back home? Um, well, in Canada, so we came back to work for our customer Wabos. Um, they got a huge distribution center on the west side of uh, Regina in Grand Coulee. So that would have been the delivery in the early morning hours of Thursday, and. Uh, that put us back in home uh, for kind of home for supper time on uh, on Thursday. Go back to Winnipeg, spotted the trailer, uh, truck uh, back to the shop in Beauceur, and yeah, so we left on the Friday before and uh, came back uh, the following Thursday. And uh, I think we had like 44, 4,500 miles. Okay. Yeah. So 4,500 uh, miles. Okay. And one question was. Um, you know, Connor, this was a training trip for yourself, at least in, in the U.S. This is their first long trip in the U.S. So a lot of, maybe you can comment on this, are a lot of AgriFresh drivers, are they single drivers or are they super singles or their their teams? So what's most common and, and what was your situation and how does that impact the the length of time of one of the, like the same trip? Yeah, so basically, you know, in AgriFresh, the 90-some um, percent of the company would be single drivers. You know, so on a single driver, you would add, they would have left a day earlier. Uh, they probably would have needed a day in between, you know, so you would add three days to that at least. So we're all just seven full ones, you know, if everything went just right, maybe a single could have pulled it off in nine and a half days or so, but it would have been a 10 day uh, trip. Um, you know, I mentioned Marcus and Erica a few times as we've talked, you know, uh, so they were like a super single. And so basically a good example of a super single is our route going down. We loaded on Friday for Monday delivery. We didn't have to run full team. Uh, if it was just one set of uh, log hours, uh, we would have ran short. You know, we would have got there in time. Maybe Monday, we could have got there Monday afternoon legally. Um, but uh, so that would have been a good example, you know, uh, that would have been, uh, so that's around 2,100 miles and a Friday to Monday delivery and takes a super single. And then coming back where we were done loading, and now you always got a member of the transition of the time zones, you know. So we were mm -hmm. in California. I know when I was sitting behind the wheel, I was looking, and so it was eleven o'clock there. But I knew that that okay, that's thirteen hundred already in uh, Grand Coulee, and so from there, you know, so Tuesday thirteen hundred to Thursday at oh one hundred, we actually asked for a couple extra hours. We got no three hundred delivery, but it's basically a day and a half. That was full out. We didn't stop anywhere to have a shower. We didn't stop anywhere for a hot meal. There was a fuel. We had like we had our fridge in the truck, so we had food with us. But that was pretty much one guy's driving, one guy's in a bunk. You know, pull over, we swap, and the truck just kept going uh, nonstop. Okay. All right. Right on. Okay. Well, how about we move into some of the other questions? John, you have some on your list? Now? Um, there was a good question from our friend uh, from Russia. Uh, what are some differences in driving in the U.S. and Canada? What are some main differences, you guys? Main difference would probably be the electronic laws. That's uh, in Canada. I believe they give you a 16-hour period to drive to actually put uh, 13 hours driving in, and then in the U.S. they give you 14 hours total to do 11 hours of driving. So you got to watch out your laws. That's uh, one of the first things to look out for, and uh, geographically. 
Um, just where we go through in Canada, it's definitely a lot flatter. Um, not nearly as mountains. And so, but um, besides that, I mean, driving's driving. It doesn't uh, change up too too much. I feel like there's no question in the states. You know, the interstate system is impressive. You know, the, the quality of the highways. Um, you know. Um, yeah, they're just big, well-maintained highways. You know, in Canada, the Trans-Canada, it's kind of hit and miss the quality of the road in some spots. I know when we crossed the border, there was that one kind of two-lane highway that we kind of cuts off one up to Tigre, Alberta. Oof, that one was beat up, yeah. you know. Um, and that's not too, too uncommon if you get on the secondary highways in uh, Canada. Um, but finally, you know, I found a nice kind of mom-and-pop restaurant there, we had a good meal yeah. uh, back in Canada, finally. But uh, yeah, and just beyond too, and again, because AgriFresh, we our core provinces, we cover our mantle of Saskatchewan, Alberta. If you did go right to the West Coast in BC and Canada, you would run flat out into the Rockies and the mountains, just like we experienced in the uh, in the U.S. There, but uh, yeah, the biggest thing in the states is just the. It's just again, you know, in the states you just get such population. Like even we came in California and Sacramento and stuff. You could run into that kind of traffic, you know, in Toronto and different places, but the, the population, the people, the size of the cities in the U.S. are just huge. Uh, there's a question about how fast the the your trucks go. So you're talking about some, you know, some doing a hundred kilometers an hour in Donners, but what's a typical rule for, for agri agrifresh? Is there a, a certain top end that they're say governed at, or you, you like to run at? Yeah, yeah. All, all our engines are restricted to 65 miles an hour, which uh, turns into 105 kilometers an hour. And so that's the company standard. It's uh, speed makes a huge difference for fuel economy, which is a big factor for us. And so that's where we set our engines at. When, uh, with Connor, we went on the trip, we were running uh, uh, between 90 to 100 kilo. I'd say like 95 is probably our 95 kilometers an hour. And again, this is not too popular. You know, just with the fleet, just because of the, and this is again where it sometimes it's been disappointing, you know, in the electronic logs. It's almost, it's had the sense of urgency to make as many miles as you can within so many hours. And so what happens is there has been more pressure on drivers to drive faster. I know when electronic logs kicked in a couple of years ago, our fleet speed, we went from 62 miles an hour up to 65. Um, it was the first time we ever increased the speed like that, you know, just because, again, fuel launch being such a critical component. Because we had the two of us, we didn't have to worry about running on the vlog hours. And so we knocked it down when we were running about 95K, because it's usually in the 90-something uh, K is your sweet spot for fuel mileage and wind resistance and that. And, uh, yeah, and when we came back, we were looking at some of the stats in the truck, and yeah, we had just awesome fuel mileage, and, you know, and so you could really, uh, there's a real sweet spot there. But we were driving more slower than is common. Okay. Right. Yeah. Um, there's a question here: uh, How often roads get cleaned in, on a mountain with snow? Uh, did you guys experience any, you know, uncovered uh, routes with snow packed in there, or uh, how often do you guys see that? I think uh, I think it's more supply and demand for road cleaning. If it snows uh, heavy enough, the, they usually they're pretty fast at cleaning it. But fortunately, our weather was very nice when we went, so we kind of avoided all snow. The, nonetheless, there was still a snow uh, peak mountain tops, and but we didn't have to drive through it. <laughs> yeah, we were really fortunate. We were aware going this time of year, it is not uncommon, uh, uncommon uh, at all to run into a snowstorm and a chaining situation and uh, going through donors and stuff. But uh, yeah, you know we. It was it was perfect weather. We had the whole uh, trip, but uh, as I understand, they're very responsive up there. You know, when it's snowing and, uh, and keeping the roads maintained. And, but uh, yeah, we had, had nothing but good conditions. Yeah, right on. Well, maybe we can wrap up right after this. But one question here from Jad is, uh, what product were you delivering? Hmm. So, what did you bring back from California? Remember what was put in there? No, well, down south we took a load of peat moss. Yeah, and uh, up north. What, it was some celery, I think it was some romaine lettuce, it's and cauliflower. cauliflower. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah fairly the cauliflower, celery, those are big heavy skits. Mm. And you know, the romaine would have been lighter. Mm. And then I think on the previous pick of the Regal, there's some salad kits. 
okay. uh, that were in there. Yeah. I was kind of wondering if we were in the fridge, and I see it's, it's neat because, um, you know, we'll shop at all of as well, and you, you can't help but wonder when you buy it. Oh, I wonder, did we haul that cauliflower? Was that in our truck, you know? And, uh, yeah, it's, it's cool. it, feels, it feels good. It's good to do it. Right. And maybe we can uh, expand on that. Why do you just haul f fresh produce? Oh, I mean, you know, that's uh, that's just what we do. You know, the um, uh, you know, it started. Uh, you know, the company evolved. Uh, we started honing in on that core lane, and uh, you know, before we knew it, over time, that that's uh, that that's what we started to to specialize in and, and do. And so, even when we went through the rebrand process, you know, and uh, um, when we came up with the AgriFresh name, it was just about like just just saying out loud, like, this is who we are, this is what we do. Uh, we deliver fresh and healthy, and uh, so basically, um, uh, in the company too, we just reverse engineer everything from there. But the the southbound freight for us is getting down there to uh, to get to the produce regions. The way we spec our equipment, to the technology on the equipment, to the systems in the office. Everything that we do is a uh, is revolves around uh, picking up that produce, uh, delivering it, uh, delivering it fresh, delivering it on time, and uh, and it feels good. It feels good, you know, when it's uh, when it's all said and done, and you start multiplying by the hundreds of loads that we do. We just deliver in uh, millions of pounds of uh, fresh produce uh, uh, to Canadians, and uh, it's just an awesome feeling because I don't know if you could do. Uh, couple of things for yourself, but when it comes to putting good, healthy, and nutritious food in your body, um, uh, it doesn't get any better than uh, fruits and vegetables. Anybody will tell you that. So uh, it's awesome. I know as soon as I heard that reefer running and we had the produce in the trailer, it was like, yep, this is uh, this is what we're here for. This is what we do. So it's exciting. And just going on that, how, how much uh, was the load in weight, um, the amount? You know, so you guys were doing celery, uh, you know, cauliflower, but what's the, what's the weight? Okay. I've been about, uh, 40, 41,000. Cause we can get up to 45. And like I said, we had the capacity yet for probably another, uh, 3,000 pounds or so. So we've been right around 41,000 pounds net produce. That was a few fridges. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so anyways, uh, I hope you guys all enjoyed that. Um, it was uh, it was really awesome uh, for us to get out of the office, uh, go experience that. Uh, I know myself too to be able to do that uh, with, with Connor. Uh, obviously, it was uh, special for me to uh, uh, to go out there and do that, and uh, and then also to like remember being his age and uh, what Agri Fresh is now uh, when I was Connor's age it was just uh, yeah, it was just a dream. You know, so uh, to drive these trucks that we have, uh, I dreamed of uh, trucks like that back uh, when I was his age. Um, just dreamed of having uh, customers like uh, Law Laws and uh, Sun Grow and, uh, you know, Richard said we just got some real big name accounts. And uh, so just actually be out there um, and, and doing something that at one point in time was just, uh, like I said, just a, a dream and a goal. Yeah, it was pretty special. <laughs> Okay. All right. Okay. Well, thanks for watching, everyone. And if uh, they have questions, what should they do? Uh, shoot us an email. Um, you know, reach out. Uh, Facebook, whatever. Check us. Check us out at Agrifresh and uh, uh, contact us page. So uh, don't hesitate uh, to reach out if you'd like to. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, gentlemen. Okay. All right. Thanks for watching, everyone. Okay.